Fiorentina have been going on the radar these last few seasons, so I wanted to shout out the incredible work Vincenzo Italiano has done in Florence. In the previous three seasons before Italiano arrived, Fiorentina finished 14th and 10th under Beppe Iacchini and the shocking 16th with Vincenzo Montella. Since taking the helm, Italiano has led them to 7th, 8th and then 4th place finishes in the league, as well as reaching Coppa Italia and Conference League finals last season. Very fitting to see a city associated with the Renaissance go through a rebirth of its own. I've still got an image in my head of Cesare Prandelli's Fiorentina that regularly played European football in the mid to late noughties. Giampaolo Pazzini, Luca Toni, Riccardo Montolivo were a handful of the key players, but the club have struggled to reach those same heights until recently. Italiano's tenure began in quite an odd fashion because it was initially Gennaro Gattuso who was brought on board as the team's manager in the early summer of 2021 but departed from the position just 23 days after his appointment due to disputes with the board. So how did Italiano take this team from finishing 14th to playing in domestic and continental cup finals? So let's start by taking a look at Italiano's style of play. And the first thing to note is he's a tactically intelligent and modern manager, typically deploying a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-3-3. He likes controlling tempo and space both with and without the ball. Throughout this segment, I'll be using their 3-1 away win at Napoli to provide examples of the different facets of his tactical philosophy in practice. So the first aspect of Italiano's play I wanted to discuss is his high defensive line and high intensity pressing, indicative of his modern forward thinking brand of football. If we take a look at moments like this, you can tell that his Fiorentina side are bold and looking to claim control of the game and dictate it rather than be dictated. Remembering that this is playing away to Napoli who are known for being really tough to play against in their home stadium. But this doesn't put off Italiano, his side still pushes really high up, deep into Napoli's own half. Admittedly, they probably played a little bit of a deeper defensive line than usual in this game, just to guard against Osimen, Kvaratskhelia and Politano's ability to run in behind with their pace. But pressing high and having a high defensive line really is the bedrock to Italiano's philosophy without the ball, um, because it means that when his team don't have the ball, they do everything they can to get it back and thereby regain control of the match. So moving on to when they do have the ball, I wanted to talk about one position in particular. Fullbacks. Fiorentina's fullbacks are a huge part of how they play in possession and going forward. On the left, you have captain Cristiano Biraghi and newly arrived Fabiano Parisi, who have been rotating a lot this season. And on the right, the same goes for the established Dodo and hot prospect Michael Coyote. Their role in the team's attacking play sees them really high up the field, overlapping wingers, seeing a lot of the ball and creating chances for other teammates. In their 3-1 win against Napoli, Parisi put in a player of the match display, really fantastic, which saw him pushing really high up the field. And when he would do so, either the centre-back Milenkovic or the centre-mid Alfred Duncan would cover his left-back position. Parisi ended the match with the most touches for his team, most successful dribbles and second most key passes, with one of them being the assist for Fiorentina's third goal. And looking at a broader snapshot of his season so far, we can see he is ranked very highly in these metrics in comparison to other fullbacks in Europe's top five leagues. I'd say all four of Fiorentina's fullbacks are really key to the way they play, but Parisi this season has just been stellar. The next thing to highlight would be centre-backs. And in order to play the high-intensity pressing football Italiano likes, you need centre-backs who are great at reading the game and are very athletic anticipating the opponent's moves but not getting drawn out of position too easily. Profiles of the current centre-backs fit the system really well with Milenkovic being the pick of the bunch. Now when Fiorentina do have the ball you often see Martinez Cuarta step up almost in line with midfielders Artur and Duncan and is allowed to play really freely among them. In the match against Napoli, Martinez Cuarta had the second most passes in the team, second only to Artur. And in a quote after the match, Italiano explains, Martinez Cuarta has a typical quality for a defender. He was a midfielder as a youngster, so he can cover these spaces and move 20-25 meters forward. Tonight he went a bit further forward than that. He was passing with Artur and Duncan. In terms of general build-up play and passing, Italiano's team is really good at executing basic maneuvers very well. So triangles, passing and moving, passing into spaces, these are all present in Fiorentina's play moving up the pitch. In order to do that, you need players who know their roles inside out. And throughout Fiorentina's lineup, you have very capable and adept players that are able to carry out their duties. I'm thinking Duncan, Icone, Gonzalez, Bonaventura. So I think one thing that works in tandem with being able to implement tactically your ideas on the pitch is recruitment and squad building. So if you track Fiorentina's transfer movements throughout Italiano's time at the club, he's been able to consistently make new arrivals slot very neatly into his tactical plans, with many of them becoming key components of his play. 
In the summer of 21-22, Fiorentina recruited names like Nico Gonzalez, Igor, Odirozola and Ikone, who would all be prominent figures in that first season. Not forgetting as well that Dujan Vlaovic managed to score 17 goals in the first half of that season before leaving to join Juventus. The following windows saw recruits Barak, Dodo and Jovic become key players in the season that saw La Viola finish fourth in the league and reached their first Coppa Italia final in nine years and first ever European Cup final. This summer, Italiano brought in the likes of Artur, Nzola and Parisi, all of which are great pickups that have started most matches so far this season. Italiano's squad building is so impressive because he's been able to add new arrivals into the strong foundational core of the team, made up of players like Bonaventura, Biraghi and Milenkovic. So there's a very quick snapshot of the great work Vincenzo Italiano is doing over in Florence. It'll be interesting to see how Fiorentina fare with playing in three different competitions this season. I'm a big fan of Italiano, so I hope he continues to do well. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. I'm just starting out, so please do leave thoughts and suggestions down below. Cheers.